Mr. Roll, you are here to prove you are not the father of Miss Gedalion's twin daughters. Yes, ma'am. You say she's infatuated with you, and that's the reason she wants to pin her babies on you. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Gedalion, you say there is no question Mr. Roll is the father of your twins. You say he left you with two babies and a broken heart. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Roll, how has this paternity suit affected you? First, I want to say, Your Honor, she's obsessed with me. Why? She would take pictures of me. She would sit there, she'll walk past my job, staring at me. Then when me and my ex broke up, I, I seen this, like, numbers of pictures that I'd never seen before. I didn't even know it was being taken. So, wait, you said you saw pictures you never knew were being taken. Yes, ma'am. Are you obsessed with them, Miss Gedalion? No, Your Honor. I am How not. did this relationship start? On breaks and stuff, I would go over to his job and get drinks or whatever, and he was somewhat of, like, a player, you would say. He would flirt with everybody there. So, you know, he was flirting with me. I was flirting back. So, I mean, after a while, you know... I looked him up on Facebook, and we started <laughs> writing on Facebook and whatnot, you know, because I thought there was something going on. You know, we were flirting with each other all the time. And after a while, he invited me over to his house. So you're saying you weren't obsessed, you were just interested. Right, right. And yes, this was Your proceeding Honor. like a normal courtship would. You yes, talked on the phone, you Facebooked. Right. Sent <laughs> text. So at this point, Mr. Rowe, you're single. No. You're not. No, when she, when she, when she, when she sent me the message on Facebook, she, I had pictures of me and my ex together. We all would go trips, we do vacation. So she was well aware I was in a relationship when she hit me up. No, okay. Your Honor. You knew no, that. Ma'am. She was well aware. She went through my Facebook and were able to find out where I was at, how to message me. She seen the pictures of me and my ex. If you had a girlfriend at the time, how did you end up flirting and being in this full courtship thing with Miss Gedalion? <laughs> <laughs> Don't um, get quiet now. Your Honor, he was <laughs> cheating. <laughs> I'm a friendly person. I'm, I get along with anybody. It's, it's hard not to like me. So I didn't really... I didn't really feel like I was being flirtatious in the beginning because I was in a relationship with a girl. We was happy, but then as time went on, we... On my part, I just felt like our relationship was going downhill. That's when she hit me up on Facebook and it went on from there. When you all were having this flirtation, you thought it was a relationship budding, he just thought it was nothing casual. <laughs> when did it change? When he told me he had a girlfriend, I should have stepped back and just, you know, stopped completely. But then at that time, like, my feelings were already, you know, starting for him. And we just kept doing it. It was wrong, you know, but we, we continued to do what we were doing. I and... wasn't going to leave the girl with for her. It was just... I told her what the situation was, and she... In my mind, she, she understood what was going on. Then when she started catching feelings, and I know she would catch feelings because she would buy me things, bring me food to work. And I, I see that she would catch feelings, I tried to step back. And then, next thing you know... Your Honor, he, he knew that, uh, that, that I was catching feelings for him. I made it known to that, and he said that, you know, he was catching feelings for me, too. I told you what you wanted to hear. And he was kind Oh, of... hold on. He just said he told you what you wanted to hear. So you admit it. Yep. You admit it, Mr. Roll. You did tell her you had feelings for her, too. I just... I told her what she wanted to hear. I was leading her on. You were leading her on. Okay. With yes, pride and conviction. Yes, Just Your Honor. being a lie. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And all the while, you with your girlfriend. Yes, Your Honor. Did your girlfriend ever find out about this? Yes, Your Honor. She Facebooked my girlfriend all the pictures, all the text messages that we had. Even after she broke me and, my, me and my ex broke up, she continued to send pictures of him um, that she's taken to my ex, even continued to talk to her. You sent her the pictures, Ms. Gedalion? That a was after I found out I was pregnant. And I asked him, I said, what would you do if I was pregnant? And he said, it would ruin my life. I said, well, then never mind. He says, you're pregnant, aren't you? And I said, you know what? I am. Don't worry about it. It's I didn't, not she, your baby. The first day, we, she told me she had to tell me something. I didn't find out. But I had to ask her like two or three days later what she wanted to tell me. That's when she told me she was pregnant. And of course, it was going to ruin my life. I have two other kids. I take care of them, but at that time, I wasn't... I, ain't, I wasn't ready to have no kids. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want no more. When you find out she's pregnant, your ex has been informed, do you think you're the father at this point? No, because she was married. What? Oh. 
Your Honor, I was in the middle of a divorce. I had been I had been separated from my husband for over a year. We were in the middle of a divorce that I was trying. The divorce lasted a very long time. And so, Mr. Rowe, your point is she wasn't completely divorced, so she may have and, still been having sex with her husband. And I don't feel she said slept with someone else. So, like, in my mind, I'm sitting there like, it can't, it can't be mine. It, Where did you hear that? From people I work with. And pe also people that work and, and the, the partner that she work at also. Had you slept with somebody else? No, Your Honor. There's another man on the birth certificate and another man was there for the birth? I asked him if it was okay before it was even done. And he said he did not care. Oh, so he do you remember her approaching do. you and saying, look, I have a boyfriend now and he wants to sign the birth certificate? No, no it didn't happen like that. It's, she, was, she was married, like... I, in my mind, it was her husband, so you shouldn't come at me and ask me, is it but okay? But this person who signed the birth certificate, that's not your husband, is it? That's somebody else. Mm -hmm. Correct. She said boyfriend. That's between you and your husband, because you're married. Oh! Oh! <laughs> so you can go and have unprotected sex with his wife, but then when she gets pregnant, it only has to deal with him. Your Honor, he knew it wasn't my husband <laughs> at the time. We all worked in the same building. My husband worked in the same building. My boyfriend worked in the same building as me and Mr. Rule. Well, Ron, ain't this all in the family? Right. <laughs> You're close I worked there for five years. Uh, kind of. You just yeah. covered every department <laughs> in that building. Listen, this is a mess. But she also got mad and told me that she slept with another black guy. Your Honor, that was in the beginning. So you said that to him? I said that because I was upset. So I'm, now you right. infused doubt, like even correct. more doubt into the it's picture. It's like throwing correct. gas on a fire. You signed the birth certificate for these beautiful children when they were born, and you were also at the hospital when Ms. Gedalian delivered. I was. Um, me and Sarah had built a relationship. Um, I knew she was pregnant. I, obviously, I knew they weren't mine. There was rumors that say they were willies. There was rumors saying that they weren't willies. After our relationship built, I didn't care. I just knew that the man wasn't around. So when you and Miss Gedalian started to form a relationship, you decided you wanted to give these children your last name. I did. Where I come from, you don't lay down with a woman without protection or anything like that unless you're willing to understand that babies can happen. Mr. Roll, you are their father. <laughs> I just want to apologize for not being there. It's just, it's so much had happened in my anger issues, I just pushed them away, like, And I can see that really hurts you now. My, my father did not mean my whole life. All me and my brothers and sisters. And I did the same thing to them. I told myself I'd never do that. Mr. Boykin, you claim that your relationship with the defendant was nothing more than a spring fling. You say after disappearing for nine months, Ms. Gully resurfaced claiming you fathered her son, Messiah Gully. You are certain that this is not your child and plan to prove that in court today. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Gully, you say that the defendant is the only man you slept with during the window of conception and you are positive he is Messiah's biological father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Boykin, I'll start with you. Why are you so certain you aren't the father? Your Honor, I'm here to prove and to tell the court and to tell her that I am not the father. I am not Messiah's father. It, we only had sex a couple times. It was like a summer breeze going through the wind. I actually did not know. I actually did not know that she was pregnant. And so you truly believe you are not this child's father? I'm not the father, Your Honor. Ms. Gully, are you certain Mr. Boykin is your child's biological father? Yes, I am certain. He's my child's father. He's the only man that I've been with during the time that I got pregnant. There's no other guy. And why do you think he's denying? I, I mean, like, I have no idea. He knew that I was pregnant because I called him from the hospital when I found out that I was pregnant. So you notified him, you told him? Yes. So you're saying that that's a lie for him to come in here and say that he didn't even know you were pregnant? Correct. All right, I want to know how you all met. What, what's this relationship about? We were just friends at the time. I mean, chilling, hooking up, basically having sex. So this was a sexual relationship? 
Yes. It wasn't a committed relationship, Mr. Boykin? No, Your Honor. How'd you meet? I met her at the store. Okay. It, it, I, met her, I met her at the store, you know. Talked to her a couple times. We ended up having sex a couple times. It was, it was just a sex we thing. We exchanged you know. numbers. That was... Oh, you just meet at the store, exchanged numbers, then, Th- then you just was, had sex? That was it. Yes. Not that same day, no. Okay. How often were you having sex, Mr. Boykin? A few times, Your Honor. I stopped messing with her, like, in August. Were you using protection? At first we was, but then I started... We never not... used protection. Never. And I see Messiah was born in April. So, Mr. Boykin, that would put the window of conception right around the time you were having sex with Miss Gully? How is that, Your Honor? Because you said you had sex over the course of a few months. If you had sex over the course of a few months and somewhere about 10 months later she says she's pregnant, that seems to be the window of time that the baby would be conceived. I can't... I I, I, I can't... I... I, uh Uh-uh. Tell me how you see this, because you two are definitely on two different pages. I understand that. But I'm trying to be on the right page because I know for a fact that's not my child. So you had gone on about your life after she cut you off. Exactly. You were living your life. You weren't thinking anything about her. And all of a sudden, didn't a friend... Didn't talk to a period until she had the baby at the hospital. I didn't... I ain't gonna lie. I didn't go up there the first day. But the second day I went up there, Your Honor, I hit the lab and I'm thinking like, Darius, is this your baby? <laughs> this, was, this, was, this was going on in my head. I'm in the lab and thinking this. You know? Is this my baby? And I said, no, nah, Darius, this ain't your baby. So I ain't gonna lie, Your Honor. I you were having go a up conversation with yourself with in your head. With myself in the lobby before I even went upstairs to the room to see the baby. So I'm like, is this my baby? Then some tell me, Darius, this ain't your baby. If you had now, look doubt, what's going on. Why would Honor, you show up? Why would you get in touch with me through Facebook to let me know that I'm your child's father? You understand? You see where I'm coming from now? So... After my friend had... But she told... said she cut you off, so did you have a exactly. number? Exactly, so if she cut me off, how's on my father? Her yes, his father. number changed. I need you to understand that just because she cut you off doesn't mean that you didn't impregnate her before she cut you off. Hold on, Miss Gully, you testified that this was the only man you were with. Who's this other man? I, he's not the father. There is the father. I, I don't believe the other guy's the father. Okay, believe... Is something completely different. I than... know Darius the father. So who is this other guy? A long-term friend. And you were having sex with him unprotected as well? Yes. How often were you with that man? Maybe a few times before I got pregnant. That is a recipe for pregnancy. <laughs> were you also sleeping with Mr. Boykin at the same time? No. It's your testimony that during the window of time when Messiah was conceived, you were only sleeping with Mr. Boykin. Right. Mr. Boykin, you believe, though, that this other man is a potential father. What did you know about him? Nothing. Nothing but what she told me. What what did she she tell you? It's a possibility that it might be his and a possibility that it might be yours. That's exactly what she told me. When it comes to two-month-old Messiah Gully... It has been determined by this court. Mr. Boykin, you are not the father. You are not the father, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Gully, I could tell that in your mind you had done the calculation and you truly thought Mr. Boykin was your child's biological father. I have to ask you respectfully, do you know who Messiah's biological father is? Yes, ma'am. Is this the other man you informed that he could potentially be the father? Yes. Does he want to be in Messiah's life? I hope. I mean, I don't know. Do you know where he is? Yes. All right. Mrs. McClung, you are here to prove to your now husband that he is the biological father of your four-year-old daughter, Desiah. 
You claim this paternity issue has fractured your marriage and you need today's results to repair the break in your family. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. McClung, you say you had no knowledge of Desire for the first two years of her life, and now that you are married, Mrs. McClung is desperate to prove you are the father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so Mrs. McClung, you say your family is fractured. Yes, Your Honor. Explain. Um, the first... The year we've been married, we've had our ups and downs in the beginning. Um, we got over that. Now, the paternity is a continued issue. It's brought up often. It's, is she mine? Is she not mine? It's, um... I, I admit, I did tell him at first she wasn't his. Oh, so that part? Yes. <laughs> I, I that admit, never goes over well. Right, but in the beginning, we were just friends with benefits around the time of conception. We weren't serious. It was an on and off thing between me and Chris. So, no commitment. So, do you remember it that way, Mr. McClung? Yes, Your Honor. I would like to start off by saying I love my family. I really do. But I cannot keep living without knowing if she's mine or not. So... Yeah, we was messing around when we first started seeing each other. We was just like friends with benefits. We weren't in a serious relationship. We weren't really together. It was actually the night of her birthday. <laughs> While she talking, I just slid over next to her, and one thing led to another. So the conversation stopped after that. <laughs> <laughs> and it was action. There was a break in between that. Me and Chris started messing around again a few months later. And that's around the time I got pregnant was uh, when we started messing around again. Then what happens? Um, Chris left and went to go do whatever it is he do. And I, um... What do you do? <laughs> well, Your Honor, like I said, we went together. So, um, for them two weeks, we was, like, just sleeping with each other. Mm hmm And I left to try to get a better opportunity from St. Louis. How long were you gone? I was gone for about two years. Two years? Yes. So, hold on. I just have to ask a question that's going through my mind. You all get together and have sex nonstop for two weeks. Yes. Then you say, I'm gonna take a job out of town. Yes. Then you don't even hear from one another? No. You don't know anything about this baby? And I, I feel like this. She probably was thinking that I wasn't ready to settle down and she didn't probably didn't want to let me know about it. I didn't have time for the back and forth between me and Chris, to be honest. He blocked me on Facebook and everything. This is the two weeks me and Chris was together. Like, strong every night. Like, for so two weeks. So, the green is the sex fest... Right. <laughs> ...with Chris. Right. And then... Okay. September... So uh -oh. That's in August. Right. This is August. This is me and Chris. September 5th, I had sex with someone else one time. You did? Yes, ma'am. And you had sex with that other person with no protection? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So that's why we're here. Right. All right. And then you go to the doctor when? I went to the doctor around the 20th of September. Um, they did an ultrasound. When they did my ultrasound, they, uh, said that I was about six weeks pregnant. So once you realize you were six weeks pregnant, which is on the 20th of September... You then counted back. One, two, three, three four, four, five, five six. six. Right. And that's the window of conception, which would have been one of the weeks you that had me and the Chris sex was together. Fest yes, ma'am. With Mr. <laughs> McClung. Yes, ma'am. And the only other person you had sex with was on the fifth. Was on the fifth of September. Yes. Which was really just two weeks before you went to the doctor. Right. Understood. You may step back to the podium. And so, once you determine that Mr. McClung is the biological father in your mind, did you reach out to him? No. I mean, I mean, it's one thing to be blocked on Facebook, but you had his phone number, too, didn't you? No. I had no way to get in contact with Chris. Once, once Chris left at the end of August and he cut off contact with me, I just went ahead and let it be what it was, and I just went with the fact that I said that the guy on the 5th was the baby. That. So, when Chris asked me, once he finally showed up two years later, if she was his, I told him no. I told him then, Chris, if you're that serious about it, get a DNA test. Ah. So, now, in that moment, what happens, Mr. McClung? Do you immediately try to find a way to get a DNA test? Um... Yes, Your Honor. I got to, um, 
me and my cousin got to talking, we got to calling places until she let me know a little information that she, uh, Miss Torres told her when I wasn't around. And this is your cousin? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I'd like to hear from you. Please stand. Mr. McClung just testified that after he thought Desire was his, you then had some information for him. Yeah. Can you share that information with the court? So, he was out of town, and I ended up going to the apartments that she stayed in because my friend stayed over there. And I ended up seeing the baby and her and another dude outside. And they was hugged up and kissing, and Desire was calling him daddy. I mean, the thing about it is, is at the end of the day, if Chris cared that much, he wouldn't have just left and just not even had a piece of contact information for him. You know what I'm saying? So, therefore, what I was doing, the person that I was talking to at that time, that was all Desire knew. Ms. McClung has presented evidence that she read that overbites were a genetic trait. Is that hereditary? It can be. Yes, it can be. It's a recessive trait, just like hair or nails or anything. An overbite can be a genetic trait, yes. It can be. Yes. All right. So, can they be attributed to any other factor as well? Absolutely. It could be tongue thrusting, sucking your thumb, or um, just sucking on a bottle too long would cause an overbite. So, after hearing Dr. Heavenly's testimony, does that make you even more nervous no. about the paternity? No. It doesn't? No. Honestly. So. You know, I already knew from your earlier testimony that when you get in a certain position, you put that wall up, right? It's easier. I understand. When it comes to four-year-old desire, it has been determined by this court. Mr. McClung, you are not the father. Oh. I'm very sorry. It's cool, because no matter what, she got me. They all got me, regardless. Thank you for that, Mr. McClung. Can I go see my baby? Oh, honey. <laughs> we want to give him a minute. Ms. McClung, I'm sorry. Honey, I know that was not the result you wanted. Can you tell the court what you're feeling in this moment? What are you thinking? I'm just hurt, honestly. Do you know definitively who her biological father yes. is. Is it the guy from the fifth? Yes. And do you know where he is? Yes. 